Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Test Smarter and Faster Using Sauce Labs Test Analytics. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. If you have joined the presentation listening to your computer's speaker system by default, go ahead and leave that feature set on. Or if you prefer to join over the telephone, just select the phone call option available in your audio pane and dial in to the audio information displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing them into the questions pane of your control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during today's presentation. I would now like to pass the mic over to Ken Drocknick, Director of P Product Marketing at Sauce Labs, who will be introducing the webinar. Ken? Hey, thanks so much. Hello and uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar on SaaS Analytics with Savi, who's our Product Manager for Analytics here at Sauce Labs. We're very excited about this new capability, and it's, this is just the start of a large investment in analytics that we see as an important feature to give you new ways to understand how you test and help you and your boss make decisions about testing that will help you release better software faster. Hi, my name is Ken Drachnik, and I'll be moderating today's session. The question panel in the uh, 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 panel on the right of your screen typically is the best place to submit questions uh, you have for us and then I'll be asking those of Saudi as we go through the webinar. We'll also uh, save about the last 10 minutes of the event to get to a Q&A session and respond to the rest of the questions that come in. This is a very hands-on how-to webinar today where Saudi will go through the, the features and benefits of our test analytics package and then go through a pretty detailed demo of how to use it, which will help you get a jump start on using analytics uh, if you are a SAUCE user today. Due to privacy concerns, you won't see anyone in the attendees panel, but you can rest assured we have hundreds of folks attending today's event. We had nearly a thousand people register for this webinar uh, over the last couple of weeks. And lastly, I'd like to remind you that we are recording the session today. You should be receiving an email with the links to the recording and the slides in the next few days, uh, as well as uh, links to collateral. Uh, we ha have a new white paper uh, that talks about how to use uh, the test analytics uh, in the SAS Labs admin console. So with that, I will turn it over to Savi and start uh, the event. Thank you, Ken. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar today. Uh, my name is Savitri Sivrama Krishnan. I'm a product manager here at SAS Labs, and I'm going to be walking you through our test analytics, the benefits of the product, uh, give you a quick overview, and walk you through uh, the demo and uh, show you how you can find uh, resources that uh, you need to use. Uh, source analytics. So what is source analytics really? It's, it's our one-stop place for users uh, to review the test metrics and uh, application quality. So whether you're a QA manager uh, looking to understand how your teams are using uh, Source Labs and uh, the quality of the application, or uh, whether you're an infrastructure manager trying to understand source usage and uh, you know, understanding uh, how different teams across uh, your organization are using SaaS, or if you're an uh, SDET or a tester or uh, the engineer who's trying to uh, fix fix a fix an issue with the application by itself, uh, we have we have something for uh, everyone to uh, and and all uh, and for all of you to get aligned on the quality of the application. Like for example, uh, I. As, as a user, or rather as, as a web application owner, I know 60% of my users are on desktop and like 40% on mobile. Like, am I ready to release a new feature across both platforms? What's the quality of my application like uh, looking at uh, the build that got triggers, uh, triggered last night? Or uh, if you want to know what are the top errors that are impacting your quality and like how that spread across different teams or how do I track down failures faster? Like what are the top failures? What are the top failure platforms and how do I address them quickly? And in the end, how do I test and release faster? Uh, so like every other product, uh, this is going to be done in phases. So what we have available is our first version of uh, SaaS Analytics, which is, uh, which is our very first step towards a long and big product vision. So quick overview of uh, the features and the benefits of the product. 
It's got a very easy to use a uh, friendly dashboard available within the SaaS web application. So if you log in into the SaaS web application, you should uh, see the SaaS analytics on your left hand side nav pane. And uh, it's very uh, simple to use, uh, self, uh, self learnable, and uh, you can quickly identify the quality of your application over a 30 day time period using SaaS analytics. And we provide multi-dimensional filtering, which means you can actually slice and dice your data by uh, different time periods or uh, by different teams or a specific owner within the team or platforms like, for example, a specific operating system, a specific uh, simulator or emulator uh, versions or uh, specific browsers and so on and error rate and uh, test statistics. So not only do you get an overview of how your uh, test quality looks like, but you can also understand the number of tests that are failing by a specific error type. And you can go from a high level view of uh, the error type into the actual test by itself. And I will show you that shortly in the demo. And test efficiency. So this is one of, uh, one of our first steps, or rather first baby steps in understanding how efficiently users are writing tests. So if you're curious to know uh, how parallelized your builds are, or if as a manager you would like to know uh, how efficiently uh, your team's using SAWS, uh, it, test efficiency is one of the things that you should be reviewing. And then last but not the least, we have a REST API within analytics. So any feature that's available within the web dashboard is also available through our REST APIs. So that way you can quickly, uh, if you have an in-house QA dashboard already, you can quickly integrate uh, with the analytics data that's currently available. Hey Salvi, we have a question about uh, test efficiency and, and, and your definition of that and what that really means. I know you're gonna show that shortly. Uh, but maybe you can explain it a little uh, in a slightly different way. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so I'll, uh, as Ken mentioned, I'll be demoing that very, very shortly. But uh, at a high level, test efficiency is uh, uh, will illustrate how parallelized your tests are. Basically, uh, it's going to look at uh, the time it takes for your build to complete running and the time it takes for your individual tests to complete running and compare the both of them to find out if your tests are running in parallel or if they're semi-parallel, meaning some of your tests are running in parallel, some are sequential, or if they're completely sequential. So I'll show you uh, that shortly within our dashboard and how to find that information through the demo. So moving on to test metrics and filters. So we have four main metrics within our analytics trends dashboard. Uh, number of tests to give you a good uh, understanding of your test coverage across the last few days. Uh, success and failure rate. Uh, error rate. Uh, errors are uh, basically a test that did not complete running. It could be uh, due to any reason, could be a source infrastructure issue, could be a user issue, could be like uh, incorrect desired caps. I'll walk you through how you can find that within our dashboard while we go through the demo. And build and test statistics. So you can use any of uh, the metrics graph to actually narrow down on an area that you want to dive into and then quickly jump into the build and test table to get into the actual test by itself. So those are the four metrics that we have available today. And the filters that we have are uh, time period, uh, which lets you go from uh, the last 30 days to about the last five seconds. And um, owner lets you actually uh, look at different teams or a specific owner within uh, the team. Depends on uh, what kind of team management uh, access permissions you have. Uh, platform, uh, as I mentioned, uh, segregated between operating systems and browsers as well as simulators and emulators. And uh, through the build and test statistics table, in order uh, to make troubleshooting easier, we have a quick filter that allows users to filter by failed test or error test only. I'm going to sh show all of this to you very, very shortly, so stay tuned. All right. Let me quickly go through some of these and then I'll dive into uh, the demo by itself uh, to visually show you what they all mean. So filters are basically uh, the drop downs that we have available at the top of the page that lets you slice and dice data differently. Uh, overview our filters are uh, the time period filter in specific uh, could be relative or custom uh, where you could specify a particular time period or you can uh, choose from some of our most commonly used relative fil time filters like last 24 hours, uh, one week, 15 days or about 30 days. 
Onerful tier, as I mentioned, uh, depends on uh, what kind of team management access permissions you have. So depending on that, you'll be able to view the data for your tests or for your team's tests or for your entire organization's tests. And platforms and browsers lets you uh, drill down into your data by browser, emulator, simulator versions, or by a specific operating system. And a failed and error test filter up, uh, is applicable only to the build and test statistics table. Again, quickly moving into the metrics that we have available today. Uh, the number of tests and success failure ratio uh, gives a good understanding of how your test coverage has been across different platforms. So you can get a good understanding of how your failure rate and the quality of the application has been over uh, the different platforms. And you can go from a high level 30D view into like a, uh, into like a five second granularity of where exactly you want to uh, troubleshoot and identify failures. And uh, we have four statuses for tests within SOS. A test can be complete or it can be incomplete, which means there's an error with your test. And uh, if you've marked your test as passed or failed using our REST APIs, then uh, you'll see pass fail statuses for uh, your test. We highly, highly encourage that users mark their tests as passed or failed, so it'll be easy for you to consume our analytics data. Hi, Savi, there's a question on that, uh, the, the REST API. Uh, uh -huh. you know, typically, we provide all the data that we display within the admin console via that, that REST API, and that's true with analytics as well, right? That's correct, yes. So people can t extract all the analytics data they're going to see here into their uh, analytics packages or their ALM packages or whatnot. That's correct, Ken, yes. So uh, it's, it's a REST API in the standard JSON format, and there's actually a link to the REST API directly from the web dashboard by itself. So you can just hit that link, and I'll show you that right now. And use the REST APIs to pull data from, uh, from our analytics, yes? Perfect. Moving on, uh, errors, we briefly went over it, and I'll actually show you how to understand your error rates better. But any test that's not complete is classified as an error. And uh, we provide visuals on what are your most common error types and how, uh, how rampantly it's impacting your tests. And uh, details on error messages and what they mean can also be found uh, within the analytics dashboard. Uh, the, next, uh, the next metric that I want to go over is build and test statistics. It's basically a table towards the bottom of the page. Uh, this is the metric that's going to help users uh, move from a high level uh, 10,000 feet view into the actual test by itself that you want to troubleshoot. And uh, that's got a lot of information within the table uh, for troubleshooters specifically to understand uh, how, what the test is, why is it failing, and directly take you from an overview at a platform level to the actual test details page by itself. So you can actually watch your test video, look at the logs, and troubleshoot faster. And quick note on uh, REST APIs. Uh, as Ken mentioned, uh, we have uh, all the metrics available through our UI, available through the API endpoints as well, as you see here. And all the filters that we have available through the UI are available as uh, parameters within our APIs. It follows the standard uh, HTTP authentication mechanism. All right, let's jump into the demo now. So uh, this is SaaS Analytics right here, and you can get to analytics through our web UI if you look at the left-hand navigation pane over here. So here are the list of metrics that we have available within uh, SaaS Analytics, the number of tests. You can hover over each bar for more information on uh, what they mean. Let's look at how this account has done over the last 30 days. There you go. So as you see, everything is a day per bar, and hovering over each bar actually gives you more information. Success and failure rate. Let me uh, explain what each of these colors mean. The greens are the goods, which means your test is completed. The reds are the not so goods, which means the test has failed, and you want to understand what's going on there and fix your failures. Uh, the grays are the ones where uh, there's no information on whether the test is passed or failed. All that SOS knows that, uh, is that it is completed. So we highly encourage users uh, to click on this link that actually tells you how you can annotate your test to use SOS Analytics better. And uh, the oranges are the errors. 
here's a list of errors that this account has seen. And as you see, errors can go anywhere from, hey, you've uh, exceeded your SARS concurrency limit to, uh, you know, a 90 second command timeout. Uh, due to an element not being found, maybe. So uh, here are here are your common error types and how uh, how many tests are actually failing with that particular error during the last 30 day time period. Last but not the least, we have the build and test statistics table, where you can uh, actually drill down from a high level platform into the actual build and the test. Uh, within uh, and the set of tests within the bill. You can actually click on any test and that actually is going to take you to the test details page so you can watch the video and uh, look at the logs for further troubleshooting. And as you see, uh, if you have test grouped within bills, which this user has done a good job of, you will see them within the bills tab. If you do not go have the practice of grouping your tests within bills, you can go into the test without the bill column and uh, you'll see your tests over there. And uh, within, uh, within the bills, you also have the start time and uh, it's uh, the duration of the build, uh, the efficiency of the build that I'm just going to go over in a minute, uh, the owner for the build, uh, the status. If, if the build has at least one failure, then the status would be a failure status. And if there's any relevant uh, error associated with the entire build, you'll actually see that in the error column. So let's go over efficiency, there you go. This is a good one. So as you see over here, efficiency is grouped into three labels. Either a build is parallelized, or it's semi-parallel, or it's sequential. So say for example, you have about uh, four tests uh, running for 30 seconds each, and uh, the build takes about uh, two minutes to complete, which means every test is run sequentially so that's that's a sequential build. If you have uh, if you have the build running within a minute, that means two of your tests are actually running in parallel. So it's a semi-parallel build. And if you have all of your tests running parallelly together, like in this case, this is pretty well parallelized. Then uh, your test would complete much faster. You're making use of all the source concurrency available to you, and that's in general a good and recommended practice. Now let's look at the filters that we have available. Uh, already shown you uh, the relative time filters. As you see, these are like some really quick uh, filters that help you understand how your tests have been doing over the last hour or over the last 12 hours. Like if you have a nightly build triggered, you actually want to go in and use this filter to see how you did last night. Uh, these are some of the common filters. Or if you have, um, uh, if you trigger a build at a specific point of time in the day and you want to see how that particular build is done, you can always go in and enter the time and check it out in the custom time filter. And I've signed in as the organization owner so I can view all the uh, accounts and all the other uh, individual owners within the account and uh, look through their test data and filter by them. Operating system, as you see here, shows you the different operating system that uh, this organization is running their tests on. And browsers actually show you both browsers, as well as the emulator and the simulator version. So now let's take a typical use case. So I want to look at the last three days and uh, check out how my application has done on one of the more uh, recent versions of Chrome. The numbers that you see within the brackets is basically the number of tests that have been run during that particular time frame. So I select the Chrome 55 browser to see uh, how many tests that I've, have I run in the last three days. Uh, as you see, there are about 9,208 tests. And each bar over here represents an hour. You can hover over any of these bars to get more information and to get more uh, data on uh, what the failure rate has been, as you see here. And uh, there's the failure, uh, the success rate is pretty low, but as you see, there are a lot of grays. So this user has not done a good job of marking the test as passed or failed. But uh, there are quite a few failures as well. Very, very low errors, and uh, all of them uh, due to a 90 second command timeout. Now let's say there's this region that actually catches my interest, and I want to dive into this particular region. So we have this cool feature where you can click and drag, as you see. And that changes the data across all the graphs. 
that period did not have any errors, so you see uh, no error data. And if you see now the table has narrowed down into the area of concentration. So now we are at a five minute per bar granularity. So I'm just going to dig into this area. We are at a 30 second granularity. And again, all the graphs have changed. And let me see that I want to dig into this particular one. Now we are at a five second granularity, as much as you can go. So let's see. So we have a bunch of tests over here that have both passed as well as failed. So I'm not interested in looking at uh, the successes because uh, I don't want to do anything about that. So I'm just going to say, show me the failed test only. And suddenly now we're looking at the failures alone. And uh, this failure is by owner Dakotas. And I'm going to click on the test to go into the test details page by itself. So I can watch the video, figure out what's going on and troubleshoot the test. So as you see, you don't, you not only get a high level view of how your application did on a more recent version of the Chrome browser, but you were able to go from that high level view into the actual test by itself that failed. So that's a very common use case across all source users. So now you want to go back to where you started. So I'm going to click back until I get back to where I started. There you go, now I'm back to where I started. You have to note that this is a near real time dashboard. Uh, so as you run through your tests, you'll see them uh, occurring here in uh, the analytics dashboard. And I can kind of do a very similar uh, lookup on how the application has done on uh, Firefox 50, one of the recent versions of Firefox. Uh, kind of the similar success rate, but definitely higher number of errors, which is interesting. And, um, and a lot of grace, again, not, not a good job on marking the test as passed or failed. And if you want to know how to mark your test as passed or failed, you can use any of the contextual help links here to actually uh, click on it and mark your test as part, uh, passed or failed. And you can also, uh, if you would like to understand what each of these error messages mean and how to troubleshoot through them, you can click on the common error messages tab that would actually show you documentation on uh, how to understand and make better sense of uh, the error messages. So, and, and something else to be noted uh, here is most of the tests in Firefox seem to be run in sequential manner, whereas, uh, whereas most of the tests in Chrome were uh, more or less, more or less uh, semi-parallel or parallel. So there's, there's a good opportunity here to like improve your testing practices on uh, Firefox especially. So let's go back and see how a particular, how efficient a particular user's tests have been. So as a queue manager, I want to know how, say, Dakotas has run the tests over the last 30 days. And I want to see uh, the failure rate and uh, error rate that Dakotas has hit. So predominantly, uh, one half of the errors that we saw across the organization is uh, coming from Dakotas test, but also shows that uh, does has been running a lot of tests, so that's good. And again, a lot of semi-parallelized set of tests, uh, very, very, very few parallelized tests, a lot of opportunities to improve. But uh, looking at these errors gives you an idea of what challenges the user is facing and how to address them through SAS Analytics. Uh, and if you want to uh, get a hang of uh, the analytics APIs, you can click on this link and that will directly take you to our API documentation as well as uh, any uh, help that you need to understand our, um, our um, analytics dashboard and navigating through it. And if you want to go deep dive into efficiency and actually improving the efficiency of your bills, again, there are contextual help links available throughout our dashboard. So please make use of it and, uh, and try to uh, try to see how your application is doing across different browsers. So that's our- uh, sorry, Can you go back to that again? We had a couple of questions. Absolutely, go for it. Uh, one, one question, which I don't think we can answer, but I think you can answer with analytics on your own data was, you know, where, where are the most failures coming from in a particular browser? And I think you, you demonstrated very well here. You can analyze all of your test results by browser, by browser version across, across time slices up to 30 days. That's correct. So, uh, so when you refer to failures, uh, it's it's good to understand that failures and errors are uh, a little different. 
Failures are tests that have explicitly been marked as failed, and errors are things uh, that could be a cost due to a user issue or it could be a source issue, as you see over here. So if you want to understand where your failures are coming from, uh, you can pretty much choose uh, the browser or platform that you're interested in and basically say, I want to just look at the failures only. I don't care about anything else. And just go into the fail test and start troubleshooting from there. In the future, we are also uh, trying to uh, trying to build failure patterns and provide more details on what are what's causing some of these failures. Uh, but for now, this is the methodology that you can use. Yeah, I think people need to realize that this is just you know the very first version of our uh, analytics platform, and we have a very detailed roadmap going out for at least the next year of adding uh, some very sophisticated capabilities to this to help you uh, better understand uh, your test Absolutely. results. Absolutely, and if this is something that uh, you as a user are struggling with, please go ahead and create an uh, idea in our Sauce Labs idea board and uh, we, will, uh, we will work on how to prioritize that for you guys. We had another question here. When you go down and look at parallelization, mm -hmm. uh, someone asked, could you talk a little bit more about parallelization, uh, what that means? in terms of uh, testing and efficiently using their concurrency uh, on Sauce Labs? So uh, as I mentioned, let me go back to, let me go back to the last 15 minutes or let's say last 30 days. Let me look at the organization. Give me one second here. My internet is a little slow. I'm trying to look up efficiency across the last 30 days. So, uh, so in an essence, basically parallelization is comparing your uh, build times to your test times. So it totally depends on how your tests are organized within a build. If your tests are set up to run sequentially one after the other, then uh, you're not using the parallelization and the concurrency that's available to you. And uh, you're rather slowing down your tests and blocking them uh, with each other. So in order to improve your efficiency, uh, we have we have a great article on how to actually write shorter at atomic tests uh, using our documentation. So please uh, take a look at it and that should give you an idea of how you can write shorter atomic tests so you can maximize your parallelization and uh, have and actually test faster. And another question came in, uh, is it possible to view the run history for a specific test? That is on our roadmap, so that's something that will come up shortly, but not right now. Yeah, terrific. Those, those are some of the, the future features that we're planning to uh, invest our engineering time into developing. And, and I think you know what, what people may miss is that you know the, the, the Sauce Labs dashboard before this just gave you a list of tests, right? There was a list of tests and a list of runs, and this takes all that that data and provides you a way to get real information and make you make help you make decisions about how those tests are running. That's correct, yes. And and I think that's that's the most important point, Ken, like instead of, uh, you know, trying to understand what failures you're fixing and how that's impacting your overall test quality, test analytics actually gives you a good overview of how your application quality is across different browsers and helps you make those decisions on what platforms you want to address first and how that could dramatically increase or decrease your application quality, yes. And, and looking at the, that efficiency number, is there any plan to bring the efficiency number to the tests without builds tab? Uh, that's a good question. Not right now, but uh, if you do have a use case for it, I would love to hear more about it. So just uh, hit me up post, uh, post, post the webinar. Great, thanks. So let's move back to the presentation. So I think we're almost at the end of the demo. Um, so we're going to ha uh, have a quick poll out there for you guys to fill up now that you've seen uh, what Source Analytics is capable of doing. Uh, take a look at the poll that's going to come up on your screens shortly and uh, you can understand uh, how uh, and, and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, read through the question. Uh, think about the feature that you would like to see within analytics and that will help us understand uh, your priorities. We'll give you another quick 30 seconds and we'll close out the poll.
All right, I think it's time to close out the poll. And uh, let's go through uh, how you can find uh, some of the resources uh, through anal for analytics. So we'd love to hear more from you about uh, some of the features that you would like to see implemented. So we want to hear from you about anything and everything SaaS analytics, things that you would like to see, metrics, filters, types of visualizations, and uh, anything and everything analytics in a nutshell. And uh, there are a lot of ways to get in touch with us. Uh, you could actually submit an uh, idea through our idea portal. Uh, so you can go to uh, the Source Labs idea portal to submit any uh, feature request that you would like to see. Not only analytics across uh, any source product that you're using. And or if you have questions while you're using analytics and you are stuck, uh, definitely get in touch with our support team. If you have uh, customer success managers assigned to your accounts, uh, please get in touch with them and talk to us about analytics. And uh, always uh, email me if you have more questions about the product. And Ken, do you want to take over some of the other information that they can find? Yeah, thanks. I'll get back to some more questions right after this. Uh, we've got an analytics solution brief, which is really uh, like a longer uh, white paper that goes into detail on, on four scenarios on how to use test analytics to make your tests uh, more efficient and to help uh, you and your, your boss decide when your uh, applications have, are of suitable quality to release those, so I'd recommend you download that. We'll also include a link to that when we send the recording and slides of this presentation out to you uh, early next week. Uh, we have a very extensive wiki that I think uh, Savi's done a great job of show, introducing you to that has lots of documentation about how to get started with Sauce Labs and how to use analytics. Uh, she pointed out, I think, the contextual help links within the analytics UI, which I think is, Engineering did a fantastic job in including those. And there's also lots of information on how you annotate your tests and add pass-fail status to, uh, to tests. And not only password statuses, uh, please please use a lot of other metadata aggregations that we have available, like you know using bills and tags. We don't yet support tags within analytics, but we plan to do that shortly. Uh, but for right now, definitely try to use bills to actually group your tests together so you can make better use of analytics. Yeah, and I think you know we have one question I think to point out to people is that currently test analytics only works for cross browser testing and emulator and simulator testing on the Sauce Labs platform, and sometime in the future, uh, it's on our roadmap to include uh, real device uh, analytics uh, results in this as well, right? That's correct, yes, Ken. So a couple of questions here, a lot of fun questions coming in. Uh, people are very involved in this today, Savi. Um, here's one, let's say I ran a test case on three different browsers. So is it possible to see uh, the test case was run on which browser and how long it took in each browser? Uh, actually, you can, and it's a little bit more long-winded now, but uh, where you can actually select the browser, uh, drill down, I mean, basically select the uh, platform, maybe, uh, if that's common across uh, all your different browsers, and narrow down on uh, the time of your test using one of, the, one of the graphs above, and that would actually allow you to see the test case that was run across all three browsers. And in the future, uh, we'd like to uh, add a feature uh, where you know you could actually view your test history across different platforms as well as uh, how it did over the last few days. And then do you have any uh, reporting within analytics around the percentage usage of concurrent sessions, or is that just in the regular SAUCE dashboard? Uh, is this specific to concurrency? Yes, yeah. I think so. Okay. Uh, not yet, and we uh, plan to add concurrency to our analytics uh, dashboard shortly. So you'll you'll see that uh, very very soon. Uh, there's another one here. Is what's the process the pr the pre process to be completed uh, on how the data is being updated before we play around with test analytics report? Uh, um, this there's no pre processing needed at all. Uh, run your tests and you can uh, see your results right away in about uh, anywhere between 30 seconds to two minutes. As I mentioned, it's a near real-time dashboard. So as soon as you run your tests, you should be able to see them. A couple of recommendations is best practices. Uh, try to run your tests with the right uh, uh, you know, testing team or test account owner. So that way you can actually use our filters to you know, slice and dice the data. 
by owner or by team. And uh, again, as another way of best practice, uh, try to include pass fail statuses and aggregate your tests into builds to make better use of our analytics. But there's no pre processing needed, everything's already up there. All that you have to do is run your tests, and you should be able to see data and analytics. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Sally. Um, this is not a reporting system where you run a bunch of tests and then at some point later you get a set of reports that let you know how your tests ran. This is near real time, so within seconds you get that data. So as your tests run and complete, this data is displayed and you can see it in real time. You aren't waiting for an hour for some report generator to run and generate these results. Um, still there, Savvy? You with us? Got yes, one more question. Um, yes. Here's a more meta question. You know, could you talk a little bit about the role of test analytics in helping people design their testing strategy? How would they look at this data and then go back and say, how would they modify their testing strategy to either be more efficient or get more coverage? Uh, can you show an That's example of that? Yes, absolutely. That's a good one. Let me let me take you back through uh, the dashboard. So one of the uh, first things that I would do if I'm trying to understand my test strategy is basically figure out uh, how my coverage is across different platforms and uh, how my failures are across different platforms. So uh, rather two things that uh, users always want to take action on is one, address failures so that they're not a blocker to your release. So make sure that uh, you look at your failures across different platforms and actually go back and plan for it in your next print or like rather right away, uh, the sooner the better, but to like, you know, fix your failures and understand how that can impact each and every platform. And number two is runtime. As always, like testing is one of the last things uh, that's that's in your CI CD pipeline, uh, you know, stopping an application from being released. So uh, we want to, you know, we want users to use uh, use uh, the efficiency metric in order to understand how uh, the tests are currently being run. So you get a good understanding of, uh, you know, how each build is actually how long each build is taking and how uh, and how that actually factors in into your release cycle for example there's a build here that runs for an hour another for almost an hour so that every every long build that you have is going to delay your uh, release by that many number of minutes and hours so analytics actually provides the data to you so looking at failures and looking at the efficiency of your test, like basically looking at the runtime of your bills, those two are very, very critical in going back into setting your test strategy. Like you could say, okay, next print, I want to actually go ahead and reduce the runtime of my bills and have more shorter atomic tests. So I'm going to focus on going from running a bill for like a couple of hours to, you know, like completing it within 30 minutes. So I'm actually going to write shorter tests so I can, uh, I, I'm going to refactor my test to be shorter and more atomic so I can actually complete running a build within uh, 30 minutes and the release cycle is going to be much more shorter with that. So those two are uh, some predominant factors that are going to affect your testing strategy. Yeah, a couple of people had questions about the price of analytics and I would let them know that uh, all this is available as part of their standard Sauce Labs uh, subscription so everybody has access to this, everybody gets free analytics. Yes, there's there's no uh, premium uh, charge for uh, the current set of features that you have on analytics. It's free for all. And both the APIs as well as the dashboards available across all our users. Uh, if you go back down to uh, the errors, here's a great one on that on the orange bar at the top, the 90 second timeout. Uh, we had a question about what's that mean? Is that a user defined or, or source defined? <laughs> That's a good one. So if you actually hit on uh, the common error messages link that I have open up here, uh, there's this extensive documentation on what each of these mean and uh, whether that's something that you can resolve by yourself or that's something that you need to get in touch with uh, SourcePod. And uh, one last question here is can we see reports in Sauce Labs? Um, so I think uh, I think the answer is yes. Uh, when you say reports, uh, are they, uh, is a user asking for downloadable reports or report across the tests? Sorry, I don't think I followed the question. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, I, I think these reports. I think it might be re the downloadable reports because obviously the, the the UI here shows them and they can export these. 
via the API, but is there an ability to download this now? Not yet. Uh, that's also one of the things that we're planning to do in the future. And if you would like to, you know, download these reports, especially uh, the build and the test table, uh, please file uh, an idea in our uh, SOS Labs uh, idea portal, and that would help us prioritize that feature. But right now, you can export your data through our APIs, not through, you know, spreadsheets or PDFs. Well, thanks, Safsavi. That's, uh, that's kind of it for the questions. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to go through this uh, fantastic feature we now have available at Sauce Labs. This has been GA'd and released and is available to everyone. So as you log into your Sauce Labs account or even log into a free trial account on Sauce Labs, you'll be able to see uh, all this analytics capability uh, displayed for you. Uh, I want to thank everyone who took time out of their very busy days. We know how busy people are today for attending today's webinar. Uh, once you leave the webinar, you will receive a follow-up email from us within about 24 to 48 hours. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, or holiday here in the United States, so it may take a little bit longer this time. We'll certainly be sending you out a, a link to the webinar recording as well as a link to the slides. You can review those, and we encourage you to share those with your colleagues as well as we'll send you a link to that uh, analytics uh, solution brief to help you get started using analytics more quickly. On behalf of Sauce Labs and all of our presenters today, I want to thank you for joining us and uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye now.